Jamie, thanks for your time, mate. It's been a very tough year. It has been. It has been a tough year. Strange circumstances and weird. Well, they're, they're all tough years, but um, when you don't get results, they, they always feel a bit tougher, for sure. Has the Bathurst scenario sunk in? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, not not maximising an opportunity. That's certainly come off the hype of Bathurst, but then uh, takes three or four days to actually realise that, hey, we had a, had a real shot there. You're not always going to have a real shot at the biggest race of the year, and uh, it's it, it slipped slip behind, but uh, that's the way it goes, mate. And it's under investigation. Safety car procedure, car number one. You're adamant that you saw the green light on the safety car coming over Mountain Straight. We don't have half an hour, but uh, mate, at the end of the day, I, I got called to pit in. I didn't know it was a safety car. So I was coming into the pits, I saw Lounsey pull off in front of me, and uh, I thought the team had made an error and put us both in on the same lap. So I made a split second decision to stay out as soon as I saw the safety car flags near the last corner I knew I was in big trouble. So I was coming up Mountain Straight, couldn't believe my eyes when, I, uh, when, when the safety car was off to the right with the green lights flashing. The light flashed four times as I come down the hill, three, three of those times they were green, the last one it was orange. Um, so I'm pretty confident that 99 out of 100 racing drivers would have uh, done the same thing. That's like a get out of jail free card, isn't it? You get to pass the safety car because they've told you to. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, I was, you know, I was just trying to do the right thing and um, come over the hill, and you know that they'd made a mistake with the safety car. It wasn't positioned right, and it shouldn't have had green lights on. You make judgments. It happens like that. Would you do the same thing? If you just did what you're told and just did it straight down the line, um, there would have been a lot of races that I that, that I haven't won. Um, I go out there. Um, I, I, we, we have a plan. I follow that plan. But if, if I can see an issue, then I'm going to try to react to it and, 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 and make the most of the opportunity. Um, I've probably, probably been 25 times. I've had to do that over the years. Um, two out of the 25 ha hasn't gone my way. It's been highly publicised. But the other 23, I'm thankful that I did make the right call and uh, it's still on the top seven of the podium. So you and Roland had a one-on-one -on -one heart to heart. Uh, no, no, we, we didn't. We didn't need that. We've certainly spoken about the, the situation. I, I, of course, of course, you're going to get some flack. You know what I mean? Of course, there's. And I, I, to be honest, I just love the passion. I, I love the passion. If if if, if you don't have a, a heap of Ford fans or people that don't like you, smash you the next day for making a mistake. Then then it's probably time to hang the helmet up. The only thing I was disappointed at after Bathurst was influential people within the sport knowing knowing it was a touchy subject knowing that hey it's not really the truth that i went against team orders you know what i mean but knew that was a great angle and and pushed on that and actually amped that up and provoked these people that weren't sure you know i i don't know much about nrl but i watch i watch the telecast and then i hear an expert like sterlo come across and say this is what's happened so i believe that scenario because he's, he's an expert you know so um, that was the only I was concerned about was the, or disappointed with, was category experts and, and, and yourself and your crew as commentators, you, you give that expert opinion for the viewers to, uh, to make, a, make a call on that, you know, so it's, it's massively critical that you guys get that right. Some great insight there, uh, Scafie, with uh, Jamie Wincup on what transpired on the mountain this year. I think it's fair to say it's still pretty raw from him he, you know he's very passionate obviously about what happened uh, sticking to his guns in the decision that he made in the heat of the battle but it was uh, it was a tricky one wasn't it well it was <clears throat> he's having a go at us it's basically the commentary team first but having a go at us about maybe not getting it right we thought we got it right because the reality is he went against team orders. That and Roland Dane said that. I mean, we heard reality. from Roland during the telecast and after, yes. and he gave us some perspective on what the team was saying and what Jamie did. Oh, and you just saw in our play on there the reaction from the team. They, they definitely told him, and they said, you know, why didn't he come in? So put that in perspective, he's done the wrong thing. Second thing is that that's the first time, so we're showing it today for the first time, the overlay of the car coming over Mountain Straight and he definitely saw a green light. Now, no one else at that stage had seen it. Check this out. It's on your right. Look for it. You can see the green. Green, green, green. And when he got there, it went orange. Now, you're doing 260 kilometres an hour, Jess. You can't just hang it off sky hooks and stop it. So the, <laughs> no. re the reality of that is that you've got to pass it. Now, there's a couple of things that could have gone on then. Mm. So 
If you've passed the safety car, because he knew he passed the safety car, I mean, we're, we're all playing the game. So here it is. There's the green light. It's the first time we've seen it. So what he, what he said is absolutely the truth. He saw the green light. Now, I would say that everyone should have considered that anyway, because yeah. that's, that's wrong. Second thing is, and by a race official standpoint and by a, a normal racing adjudication standpoint, he probably should have had the benefit of the doubt there, and they should have said, you've passed the safety car, slow up, and we'll get the safety car to go in front of you. Now, that would have parked him behind the safety car. Now, that, uh, that's a redress. That should have happened. It didn't happen. He blazed on. The second thing is that if he didn't disobey the team and he come in behind Lowndes, he would have had to double stack. So let's have a look, because we've actually got the vision of him coming into the pit. This is on board. He was called in. All those cars there, Reynolds, Winterbottom, Lowndes, they've all come in. Jamie stayed out. He went against team orders. And if he come in and, and park behind, none of us like double stacking. In fact, Craig Lowndes and I lost Bathurst because we double stacked. You park up behind, it seems like an eternity, mm. but he would have finished on the back of the podium somewhere. His speed was fantastic. He would have come out, we did the calculations, between 10th and 12th. So if he double stacked, did what he was told, rough chance of being on the back of the podium. If he does what he does, he's nowhere. Well, two years in a row, uh, Jamie Winkup's Bathurst 1000 has ended controversially. He'll be looking for redemption here on the Gold Coast this weekend. He is going to feature in the top 10 shootout. We're going to take a very quick break here on Fox Sports. When we come back, that is about to go get underway here on the streets of Surfers Paradise. Can Jamie Winkup take pole position here on the Gold Coast? Wait and find out right after this.